Have you ever thought about how long you want to live? You might be thinking, as long as I have my health. But just how old is that? And if you were able to extend your life with around 10 years, would you be willing to? The number speaks for themselves, and the risk for heart disease and cancer is highly reduced by having a healthier diet. So why is it so hard to make the effort for those extra years when there's no doubt that the food we eat, how it's produced, affects our health or lifeline, and in the long run, also our planet? In a busy everyday life, many of us turn to alternatives from the big fast food giants, such as McDonald's. The urge for unhealthy fast food is due to the fact that it contains a lot of fat and sugar, which we're naturally designed to crave for, all the way back to the Stone Age. Historically, access to carbohydrates and fat was very limited. So therefore, when you first found it, you had to get as much as possible. These primal instincts might help explain much of our relationships with the big fast food giants today. And how McDonald's alone are enabling to serve 69 million of us globally on a daily basis. What is often talked about are the negative consequences of the consumption of unhealthy fast food. And the importance of starting to talk about investing in the public health and not just talking about investing in the public wealth. Because what are we without our health? Recent research shows that 70% and one out of four children in Norway are struggling with lifestyle diseases. This is not only bad for the public health, but it costs the Norwegian state enormous sums of money. Every year in Norway alone, we spend 68 billion on lifestyle diseases. These billions we could have spent on education or environmental concerns, but we are spending them on making bad decisions. And the research points out that the main problem is the access to healthy alternatives. So why? Why should it be so difficult to eat healthy? If this is a problem, why don't we can make it easier to have healthy options that are actually good for us. If poor public health and reduced quality of life is the price to pay, we should all take a collectively social responsibility and focus on improving the access to healthy and nutritious food. And the fact that this also applies to one out of four children means that we must take action now. If not, we will risk that these children will also struggle with obesity as adults. And that could be a burden for children, both physically and mentally. I was one of them. So you can just imagine this. You're going to climb a mountain. And you have this really, really heavy backpack on your back. And you climb. <sighs> it's so heavy. And then you finally get to the top. Oh, it's such a relief because you can take your backpack off. But this backpack, all we children and I carried at all times. They have them in their bed, at school, in the children's birthday parties, everywhere. And sadly, many children experiencing bullying linked to their weight, concentration difficulties, anxiety, low self-esteem. I did that too. There are no doubt that these health challenges are tremendous. And the easy access to unhealthy fast food is problematic. On the other hand, what is often overlooked, it's how much power these fast food giants have over today's food system, and as well as the role we as consumers play in it. Today, our food system accounts for around one-third of global emissions. And the red meat industry accounts for 15% alone. In comparison, the global air traffic accounts for around 
The reason why the food industry accounts for such a large share of global emissions is based on land use, production, sales and transportation. And the red meat industry is the biggest contributor to the equation. And when it comes to the red meat industry, I'll tell you this. McDonald's is actually the largest purchaser of red meat globally. And it's actually the largest purchaser of chicken as well, after KFC. And when McDonald's decided to add apples to their Happy Meals, which was a good thing, they became the largest suppliers of that too. So there are no doubt that McDonald's has had, and continues to have, a major influence over today's food system. And it's with production and our consumer habits. What is over 36,000 restaurants in 190 countries serving 69 million globally on a daily basis. Just a beef in the cheeseburger causes eight times as much emissions than meat from salmon and chicken. So the beef many of us find in our fridge and consume on a daily basis is the climate's worst thing. I'll give you an example. One kilogram of meat from a dairy cow produces actually the same amount of emissions as traveling with the subway in Oslo for a whole year. So how can we break out of this pattern with these large, large fast food giants and reduce the consumption of red meat? Do we need another actor to be as big as powerful as McDonald's, but with health and sustainable options? It was this that triggered us to start the company I founded. To make healthy and sustainable food accessible and affordable to everyone. But when this all started, I was still in college and I had no money. So to solve this and test if there were a market for health and sustainable food, we had to get creative. We had to think big, but start small. We ended up renting a shipping container from the harbor and placed it in the city center. My partner, he actually made a pop-up stand out of wood in his garage. I printed a poster and some t-shirts. I took some plants from my terrace at home. We made some pre-made healthy food, and voila, we had a business. Healthy Eats was born. We are very curious if they're going to come any customer at all to buy from that blue shipping container. What ended up happening was that we sold out on the first day. In that entire week, strangers I had never seen before kept coming back. Why? I had to ask. Do you usually eat very healthy? One of them replied, um, no, I actually don't. But this tastes good. I save time. It also makes me feel better. Therefore, I keep coming back. And then we realized that we had a market for healthy and sustainable food on the go. Now we just had to make a solution that made it accessible and affordable to everyone. The blue shipping container was only a test to validate the idea and not a long-term sustainable solution. So to solve this, we had to turn traditional restaurant model on its head. Because staff costs and rental costs are expensive, nor at least the investment of a kitchen. This drastically increases the price for the consumer. So we started with the kitchen. Instead of each location preparing its own food, we centralize the kitchen in one location, prepare everything there, and distribute it out to our locations. And when it came to the food, it was important for us that it wasn't only tasty and good, but that it was sustainable. So from the start, we chose to cut all kinds of red meat and produce all our menus according to the UN measures of climate-friendly food, the Reach 2030 goals. And over to our locations, we swapped out our blue shipping containers and we created food walls. Self-service food machines that didn't use much space and were low cost to operate. When we decided to serve people with machines instead of people and centralize our kitchen, we were able to give people exactly what they wanted. A good meal, more time, and better conscience. And also, the way we built our business model allowed us to enter new markets, hospitals, colleges, shopping centers, and now workplaces. If you want to change people's behavior, 
you need to make it accessible to where they are. If not, habits will not change, and change won't happen. We need to nudge people in the right direction and make it easier for them to make good choices. If we continue to be successful in building our solutions with easier access to healthy and sustainable food, and more people like you or individuals and companies follow along, it can help bring a shift in what is being produced and also enable an implementation of the global goals of cutting 50% of red meat within 2050. I'm not telling you to cut all intake of red meat, but if we all eat a little less, the impact can be insanely great, both for our own health and the environment. And remember that the biggest impact we can have as individuals to reach 2030 goals is to change our diet. The world is dependent on what you eat, not just your own health. Eat better, live longer. The world needs you now. Thank you.